Okay, so for our uh, Bowie attachments, we have decided to add three attachments which will give Bowie the capability of planting grass seed. The first attachment would be this uh, cylindrical roller, which would be replacing the uh, shovel on the original Bowie. Then there's the grass seed hopper on top, which would be replacing the trash collector on the original Bowie. And then the rake is meant to be dragging behind Bowie to kick up the grass seed. And attaching is the rake, and which is made of iron, as you can see like this, which is broken. Then uh, it is uh, really tough and sharp, and, and and it can turn off the soil when it is working. And um, actually, it is connected with the hopper. Uh, when it goes down, the hopper, the door will be open. Then um, the seed, the grass seed, will, will drop on the ground. So it is how it works. And I hope to introduce the hopper. So we designed the hopper so that it can gradually drop the seeds. And as he mentioned, the side will side open when the arm goes down. And we move back to its initial position when it's moved up. Okay, so the, the roller basically just uh, digs into the soil and turns it over so that new fresh soil will be available to, for the seeds to drop into. So it won't just be dropping into dry soil. And uh, it just basically, as the Bowie robot is moving, it just digs into the ground and turns it over. Okay, great. Um, so first of all, I like how you took the initiative to make a cardboard prototype. Uh, that's good so that way you can see it hands on and try different things. Something I would consider if I was your group would be uh, possibly just discarding the seed planting idea and just going forward with the uh, roller and the metal rake. Uh, another thing you could do is possibly partner with one of the seed planter projects that you see here today in order to make yours compatible with theirs, which would enable it to be essentially a complete solution. So far we haven't seen any of the rollers yet which is incredibly useful. That's something that is needed in order for the seeds, uh, for some of the seeds at least, to be planted if they need to have uh, trous digged into the soil. Uh, I wasn't entirely clear if the metal rake is attached, is attaching to the arm. Could you clarify like, what is attaching to existing components? Okay. We have the dovetail argument to help we'll be attaching it to some kind of axle that we create for the rolling. Perfect. Yeah. One minute warning. Uh, and the metal rake, where will that be attaching? Uh, it will be placed in the back. Okay. And for the rake, will you have an ability to make sure it's uh, compliant with different shapes of the land? Like if there's a hill, um, will it get stuck? Great. Okay. Yeah, so just keep in mind that uh, don't make it a rigid structure because it might break and it also might harm the robot. For the roller, were you considering integrating any electronics into it or just having it passively controlled? Uh, sorry, you're running out of time. Next group, please. Group 82. Get ready, please. All right, good job, thank you. Two components, a water pump and a moisture probe. 
So by the user's command, the moisture probe will be able to be lower, or lowered into the soil, and it will collect the moisture reading. And depending on whether that meets a certain threshold uh, determined by the user beforehand, then the water pump will activate and will spray water and increase the moisture levels in the soil. All right, so um, here's our prototype or two pictures of it. So on the left uh, is the original position of the, the prototype. And as you can see, the moisture probe. Um, so that's the original pos position. And right here is the position when it's extended. And uh, Aaron, I know your concern was that it wouldn't reach far enough uh, to the soil. Well, it, well, it surpasses the 12 centimeters. So we can confirm that it will uh, reach the soil. Um, here's a CAD model for um, how it will mount. It will mount onto the uh, dovetail of the Bowie. And uh, there's a little information about the water pump, the moisture probe, and the servos, which will lower the moisture probe. Uh, water pump takes five volts. Uh, each servos take uh, five volts. And the moisture probe will take 3.3 volts, because any more, it will be unnecessary for the function of the moisture probe. All right, now touching on some challenges that we face as a team. Uh, firstly, we have difficulty creating a means to hold a significant amount of water in the hopper structure like uh, dimensions. And uh, alongside that, we had difficulty with the, with the sealage of the box because we have some electrical cables that are coming out of the box. Uh, secondly, we had difficulty dealing with the spring and distribution of water. And to overcome that, we created that nozzle, as you can see up there in the corner, uh, which helps us switch the water uh, more evenly. And thirdly, we had to move the entire circuit from breadboard to protoboard, which involves some soldering, but that was another challenge we faced. And finally, we had some general budget constraints. Obviously, in real life, with uh, more, more resources, we can create better products and better uh, outcomes, but limiting to a $100 constraint and everything, this is uh, a difficulty we faced. Uh, don't be <coughs> manufacturing details. Every single uh, pieces of the uh, product going to be 3D printing except certain electronics and specific screws, um, most certainly for linking the horns together. Uh, each 3D piece that's going to be printed is going to be within four hours. Um, if you want to know how much time it's going to take to create the whole prototype, it depends on how many uh, printers you have. If you're not gated by how many printers you have, then it's going to be a minimum of four hours as all the code is going to be able to be uh, uh, copy pasted and uh, the circuitry it doesn't take that long and uh, every piece is going to be within four hours, that's the spectrum. In terms of budget, One minute. in terms of budget, uh, it's ninety point forty four dollars currently. <laughs> uh, all of it is due to electronics, obviously, um, with uh, nine point sixty six dollars available currently. Uh, as for our timeline, we're going to be done creating the prototype by the third prototype by uh, this Saturday. So uh, two days to create this serial communication, which is going to be done right after this presentation. Uh, two days to create the axle from uh, when you receive the feedback. So we already updated the CAD model, but we didn't have time to. Uh, to put it in the presentation. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, three days to run the circuit to a breadboard after we've done this, this circuit communication. We just want to make sure that everything works on the breadboard. And uh, finally, once the prototype three is done, which is this Saturday, we're going to iterate consistently until design day. And that was our presentation. Thank you. Wow. Next presentation, please. for Bowie to allow it to collect uh, samples of water. Now this is done based on the customer's desire to partake in the Open Data Standard for Recreational Water Quality Initiative. Uh, and to be able to partake in this properly, the customer also needed uh, multiple samples of water to be able to do it remotely <coughs> and uh, make sure that in the future it's repairable via 3D parts. Now from this we came up with several target specifications for our, uh, for our extension. Uh, one of which is uh, the robot arm should be able to reach at least 50 centimeters from body over, able to reach any body of water it's collecting samples of water from. And on top of that, uh, multiple samples of water just for redundancy, and each sample of water be at least 100 millimeters in size, just to make sure good testing quality and keep it cheap for um, robot missions, keep it below $100. Now, from this is our current prototype for uh, our solution. 
which comes in three parts. Uh, the first of which is the arm with two servo motors, giving it two axes of rotation. And then on the back side of the other two parts, which are the pumps and the uh, water containers, three pair of solid pumps to make sure that we keep out any cross contamination issues. And make sure we store the water off the side of the boat, just in case there's any leaks, to make sure that the circuitry doesn't get wet, we don't fry them. Uh, and on top of that, just, just our wiring diagram that I've set. Control the servos, the pumps as well, uh, just in case anyone's curious. And finally, we have our cost analysis showing that while we weren't able to keep it under $100, we did keep it at $100, keeping it just affordable for the project. Uh, and that's everything we have for today. Thank you very much for the time. And any questions? Uh, okay, that's great. Uh, could you show us a little demo, uh, even conceptually, like moving it by hand? Uh, yes. So currently uh, a problem we're having is just getting the servos to accurately go to certain positions. Okay. Uh, but right now the idea would be it would reach the edge here and then it would extend forward as it connects to the arm that's currently already sure. on Bowie. And then it would just extend downwards pump the water into one of the three pumps you could choose on the controller and then the arm would extend back up into its resting position. That's great. Um, what next do you have to do? Uh, our next step is to uh, print the arm. We're actually going to laser cut or 3D print. Um, 3D printing would take longer but laser cutting would be more structurally sound and also just be able to do each individually. Mm -hmm. And then also we still need to 3D print uh, the water holder and also the servo container for your Arduino. Alongside also soldering it so that it's, uh, or putting it onto a protoboard, so it's just a little more clean. Okay. Um, yeah, I've, I've <coughs> received your materials beforehand, so provided some feedback then. Uh, I think this progress is really great. Okay. And, uh, so if you're happy, Aaron, we can move right on. Yes, I'm very happy. That's very nice. Thank Thank you. You. Project. Our objective was to create a moisture level sensor uh, that would um, aid in figuring out uh, the, the moisture of different soil samples. And our objective uh, was to create the most cost effective <coughs> secondary arm, which could log and collect different soil samples. And uh, we also wanted our project to be flexible and versatile, but in the near future, if we wanted to, we could attach another type of sensor and this would be cost effective and easy. So it could be used uh, with like other um, arms such as like seed planting or um, maybe like a pH sensor to like further enhance this other. So just to explain the SOLIDWORKS and the CAD design, uh, our initial prototype, which unfortunately was <coughs> stolen the other day. What? The prototype data, Dr. David Bowie, and other as well, and for professor. So just to explain uh, very quickly, uh, we initially we wanted to have a attachment, a platform that can rotate around, swing out when Bowie collects the soil sample, already using the attachment that he already has um, to collect that sample. It's going to swing out, so then that way when the arm is not in use, it can be scored back. And then when the soil sample is recorded, um, is recorded and stored for further use, further testing, for example, um, it's not going to get in the way and it, and it also reduces the chance that it and uses three servos. This is our first prototype. The first servo is going to be at the, is going to be at the base right there, which rotates <coughs> around. It is a SCARA-based design, which stands for Selective <coughs> Compliance Assembly, so it's very easy to, to choose uh, motion. It's only done in two dimensions. So, well, done in two, two dimensions. Okay. You can move the next fly up and down, and that's it. Very similar to 3D printers. So, this, the second servo is up here. It's going to move the probe down and up. So, it's very, um, it's very versatile. We can easily attach any sort of probe to, 
to that sample there. And for cost purposes, we initially wanted to do a pH, but it was a little too difficult to find a cost-effective probe since with pH meters you have to include a buffer solution to adequately cleanse and recalibrate it. So for the purposes of this project, we'll be using a much lower. So here is um, a video I don't think. You have enough time, I would know yeah, that. I think yeah. these are also, this is just a quick demonstration of the servo test that we're going to be doing and the range of motion we're expecting to have with our second prototype, which we'll be showing in the next, next few slides. So this is just a block diagram of how the components of our module will communicate with each other. So the battery in the mi middle is Bowie's battery, and it will provide power to the Arduino and the One minute. And the Arduino will then uh, distribute it to our three servos. And the, those are just how our moisture sensor will talk to the Raspberry Pi, and our Arduino will be talking to Bowie's Arduino. So most of our arm is actually 3D printed, which is free at the university. So the only thing that we had to pay for was the electronics, which came out to around $85. So that's still under our um, budget, which was good. Um, yeah. Uh, do you have any questions there? Uh, yeah, so my question is, how does the probe move up and down? What sort of mechanism? We saw that in our second prototype. Well, we had a second prototype that was available for some reason it's not in our, in our slide today, but instead of using a probe that moves up and down, instead we just fixed, we just eliminated that entire probe altogether and put a second, and put a Thank you very much. Breaking system, and here to describe it to you is Ibrahim and Fatah. Ibrahim, take it away. Okay, so our um, attachment is something that attaches above Bowie's wheel, and it's an emergency braking system that works with electromagnet called a solenoid, and it will be controlled by our Arduino. And we'll demonstrate it just to explain it better. Um, so basically, uh, basically this is Bowie's wheel. We'll just. And then this is the solenoid that will go on, and it'll stop. And this will be controlled by Arduino, and then this is our second prototype. So this is the first setting of manual braking. So next we have a uh, slow harmonic motion. This kind of motion is supposed to be able to stop Bowie gradually. If you want oh, to okay. I get it. So there's yeah. another solenoid on the breadboard. It's not connected to the no. solenoid with the yeah. green wheel. Oh, okay. And then we have a quicker harmonic motion. Nice. So in quicker deceleration is required, you can just choose between different frequencies mm -hmm. and change between them. So the way we're planning to have <coughs> um, Bowie and the system interface to Bowie is by mainly a, either a mouse control or some sort of a, or a, of a iPhone or a smartphone app, something that will be able to be separate from all the current control systems and still be able to stop uh, the wheel just by communicating to it by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And we're also planning to power it separately by a separate battery. And the reason for both those decisions are <coughs> so that if the entire system of Bowie fails, since it is an emergency system, is to be able to actually uh, stop Bowie, even if the entire system fails. Okay, cool. Okay, is that it? Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, I like your consideration into making this as an emergency system. Um, can you think of anything else that would be helpful to have in the event of a Bowie emergency where everything has to power off? 
Yeah, we're also we're also thinking about actually interfacing it to the actual Bowie system and actually like having the and there's also the idea of having the power supply somehow connect to the rest of Bowie in case of having to shut down the motor. We're not sure if we'll be able to get this specific part done by the right. end of this project, but it is uh, something that's going to be available by having a separate battery. Mm -hmm. And this way, by connecting to the current motor, we can shut it down if the rest of the fails. And yeah. this way, we have less resistance from the wheels. And this way, we can prevent Bowie from uh, falling into a ditch or something, because mm -hmm. apparently it's those certain mistakes that happened before. <laughs> yes. Okay. So it could help. Um, okay. Uh, so before design day, what would be really great to see is uh, possibly some better considerations of the brake pad that you currently have now. Um, maybe trying uh, material that would work uh, well in uh, in a real world scenario. Um, yeah, we're currently kind of thinking of using like a rubber brush yeah. of some sort or to create more friction, but not hard. Okay. Um, and uh, the other thing is, if there would be a way to incorporate, uh, possibly just by a simulation, uh, the current readings, uh, so amperage readings of the DC motors that we currently get from the robot. So add that to your design to be able to say, oh, if the, if it's draw if the motor is drawing too much current, then at this threshold, we'll apply a certain pattern. <laughs> Essentially, what we're working on is a little trailer here. Um, so we noticed that in Aaron's original presentation, uh, Bowie could only lift so much sand into the back hopper before it was full and then it would have to be manually emptied. As well as um, the little scoop was not terribly effective at sieving the sand out. So it collected a lot of sand along with the garbage. So with our trailer, essentially the arm will come back and scoop the sand and the garbage into the trailer, and the trailer will have multiple sieves that are essentially just screens. An offset axle system um, that is obviously not as aggressive as this, but something along this line, um, you, you could take a look at that if you Great, want, um, will be bouncing the trailer so that um, we don't have to deal with electronics, we don't have to deal with Arduinos, we don't have to deal with motors. Um, it's just a really simple screen sieve system that's just going to bounce so that the sand can fall through back to where sand belongs and the garbage can stay collected. Um, that's just really our basic concept there. Um, part of our decision process was um, we noticed there's a lot of um, grass, grass seed spreaders and different other systems that are existing. So with a trailer like this, it could be used to house another battery or have other utility uses along with it. Um, such as if you wanted a seed spreader on the back or you wanted um, a moisture probe or even an emergency brake in the trailer itself. Um, all of those are possibilities. Um, our current model is um, the red part you see will be made of wood just to make it easy in the maker space. Is, we've got that there. Yes. So that's the general size of the trailer. So it'll be able to store that much more plastic and hopefully filter out the dirt. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole bottom here, the axle, um, will all be 3D printed. We weren't able to complete that um, due to just some difficulties uh, printing and securing print time. Yeah. Um, but that will be done, of course, for design day. So we have a couple questions for you just right away. Okay. Um, what do you think of the offset axle system in order to bounce the robot? Um, I'm not sure if it will work, but if it does work, that will be an interesting way to passively create the vibrations to sift out the sand. Um, a concern I have, like if it's at this sort of friction, which maybe it won't be, uh, that it might be a little tricky, like the wheels may drag in the sand. I got, 
I got the model slightly incorrect. My tolerances are a little bit off. The, the axle uh, tolerances will be a little bit looser to allow it to, to turn easier. Great. One other problem that we spotted early on was if it was going through a dune of some One sort. Minute. Um, and our solution to that is we'll just connect on the two V springs instead of a solid support. Nice. Um, just so we can bend and move with the original Bowie. Are uh, there any questions you have for us? Yeah, so my number one question would be uh, what the mount will look like and um, what considerations you're keeping in mind in order to make sure it's as modular as possible. And uh, the last thing before we get cut off for time, I do have extra uh, drive struts, so um, instead of worrying about print time, I could just let you borrow them. First, thank you for the offer for the extra drive struts. Uh, the connection is going to be a fully independent connection, so it will simply be springs along the bottom edge of the platform to connect. And then the, uh, the hopper chute is going to be entirely fixed to the rear trader. No fixation to the <coughs> forward Bowie model at all, so that nice. it can move independently for accessing uh, Yeah, Tolerance great. About. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> what? So this, first off, this is our, to conceptualize where everything is fitting on Boeing, because it's hard to picture with just that piece. So it's the, the hopper that you're holding goes on top. We will have lids like you suggested. They just weren't ready in time. And then the chute, obviously. And we will have, we didn't have it built in time, but the fan system is going to attach via a dovetail joint here to the wheels that Again, I looked at the disc issue that you saw with the wheel connection and have also fixed that, but again, didn't have the prints ready in time for that. So our design is uh, passively powered via those wheel systems that we had talked about before. Uh, thus, it doesn't have a power impact on Bowie. And because of the lack of electronics allows us to keep it on a super low budget. So far, we've only spent about $8 on the fasteners that are holding that together right now and the hot glue because uh, I had some design issues. Um, right now, the primary uh, focus of our system is as a seed spreading module that is passively powered. It will work much like those little seed spreading carts or the sand trucks that spin a fan to uh, spread the seed. We, in our communications, you asked about information on our budget and timeline right now. Because it is passively powered, uh, we, our budget is just the PLA required to print and the fasteners. If you'd like more details on that, I can email you our full budget and schedule. We have that. Uh, currently, our biggest challenge is time, obviously, that everyone is struggling with because it's hard to get printer times and also because we have a single CAD designer doing all the CAD work for us, that makes that hard for them to fit that into their schedule. Uh, but obviously everyone is contributing to the group and we reviewed your feedback from the last email that we sent because we've been communicating a lot and the concerns about the gap were addressed in that prototype, the concerns about the wheel I am working to fix and we do plan to build a lid as I said on this larger prototype. Wow. This is phenomenal progress, guys, amazing. Um, this looks like something that could be installed onto the robot today even, uh, except for like some of these minor alignment issues, uh, but I'm sure you'll fix that. Um, so a question I had is, in your cardboard model of Bowie, why is it taller? Because I measure. Uh, this, this was made very, very early on to help us conceptualize, and thus it has the weird square fan instead of the circle one that makes oh a no, lot more sorry. sense. Um, yeah, that's why it's taller, because I measured wrong when first looking at the CAD models that you had sent. This was back when we just had the numbers in an, uh, a Google Doc to work sure. off of before I had the CAD models. Okay. Uh, and for the fan that will be in here, do you have any backup plans if the passive power system doesn't work? 
it's designed, the fan itself is designed such that the seeds can't fit through unless it's spinning, like it, it goes over a, it goes over a little plate that will prevent if it gets stuck, seeds from just falling out. Okay. So we do have fail safes for that. Great. Um. Oh, uh, another thing would be um, these two dividers, if the hopper is going to be full, should probably extend to yes. this top edge. Those pieces are not printed yet. We do have plans for those. Great. Um, <coughs> this much. is great progress. Thank you. So our project is about dispensing certain different types of fluids. So not only just water, but we could dispense anything such as bubbles, fertilizers, or the like. So not only is it easy to assemble, but also child friendly. So the way it works is that we have a water pump, and then <laughs> something along those lines. But the way we put pressure through this air tube, and it will create enough pressure in the container to dispense the air, so like this. <laughs> um, with our design, we want to make it electronic so that we would attach the air pump like this, and then we would turn it on via Arduino on the Bowie. So it would, Bowie would be here. The body of the Bowie would be like this. And since we have different containers, we can place them virtually anywhere, so we don't have to worry about 3D printing any containers and reducing the material. So we can attach it here, or on the sides, <coughs> or anything of the like, because we are designing hinges so that any containers could fit on the leaf. Um, with the Arduino, we want to make it so that it could be controlled via studio. So it would, you would have a remote control, and then it would dispense uh, so fluids like that. Okay. Yeah, the reason we chose like a, a soil like fertilizing device or a soil watering device is because we knew a lot of groups were making like seed dispersers. So um, we're planning maybe to have it like work in combination with a seed disperser. So we haven't designed exactly how it's going to mount on Bowie because um, we're thinking maybe we could combine it with a, some another group seed disperser. Maybe. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so we're just wondering like what are your thoughts about this and maybe any advice or. Like Sure. So uh, my thoughts are, um, this is the group where you wanted to also use like soap bubbles, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So the way we are doing it is that we don't just want to have one container. We can have multiple, as many as we like. So depending on the container, it can have different fluids. So one container could have bubbles, and we could implement 3D print a nozzle so that it could blow bubbles so that it's child friendly. Um, different containers can disperse fertilizer or water. So depending on how we control the Arduino, we could, depending on the switch that we turn on, it would disperse different types of fluids. So how far along are you with the electronics? Like I notice you have a like standard fish type pump here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what's uh, the progress on that? For the pumps, we could, since this is just a prototype, we just use a standard air pump so that we could test if the pressure actually works. But we found out that different air pumps could work as well, so we could even use a stronger air pump. We could use a DC 6-volt air pump okay. to attach that on a uh, breadboard and then onto the Bowie itself. Um, Do you have any concerns about uh, the remaining time and wow. how much electronics you have to do? Um, well, we already uh, designed the main functionality of the, our design, but uh, after that, all we need to do is figure out the control, and so uh, we're all pretty much programmers here, so it would, okay. it would be done in a very short amount of time, and then find a way to make it look appealing on Bowie. And I think we're also lucky because we also have time on the weekend, like a lot of time on the weekend, so we can also work on the project, and we're pretty good like, with working together, so we can like, split it off into different components of the project, and we can all work together to get it done. That's great. Working together is definitely a strength. In terms of the mounts for 3D printing, uh, 
maybe you wa might want to partner with another group that presented here who also has containers mounted to the side of the robot. Uh, that way you can just focus on the electronics. <coughs> Set up, I'm just going to start. Um, so what we're doing, we're doing a water quality test that's basically going to be testing uh, like pH, alkalinity tests, um, nitrate, nitrite, and it's all to test the water quality test. Um, so um, yeah, so our aim is to not fully um, annihilate Bowie's main function, which is to pick up the derps, since uh, we're using it on the shoreline to pick up water, so we also would like it to have its main purpose, which is um, picking up dirt. In addition to that, it's going to have our attachment, which is um, which is the water quality test. Um, so why are we doing this? We took one of the discuss discussions in class about how inspectors get lazy, um, and we thought we could maybe improve on that. So as inspectors get lazy with time, we decided maybe maybe this uh, would. Um, annihilate that and since it's also a safety hazard. Uh, um, to add on, uh, from what he's saying about uh, we don't really want to eliminate the function of the Bowie robot itself, uh, this acts as like a modular upgrade, so it doesn't uh, necessarily change the actual drivetrain or the actual arm drivetrain of the Bowie robot, it just is like an upgrade or just like an add-on to it. So you could remove it and add on to it. And the idea is we're using a fish tank uh, pump. Uh, that's all we really need to get water from the shoreline. And we attach it to the actual robot itself. And the, we're using tubing uh, to tether it through the arm so it can reach the shoreline and the water, to pump water back into uh, test tubes and, and uh, this pump. From the pump, there'll be uh, splitters, three splitters. There'll be three test cases. Each, each case will have its own solution. Uh, from that, uh, there will be three valves, and each valve you can turn on and off to depend on which test case you want to insert the water in. So the water will go from the pump into the, into the valves, from the valves to the splitters, into each one of the three test cases you choose. Right, so the water goes into the test tube, right? And as the water goes in, there's going to be a, a water test solution, and as the water goes in, the water test solution will react immediately and will produce the result. Um, and so a cool thing about these test tubes is that it has an interlocking mechanism, so whenever Bowie's in motion, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the test tubes won't fall out whenever it's like... Um, if, you, if you could look at the thing, if you turn around, you can open it, basically, yeah. So that, that way, um, when Bowie's moving, it won't have any shaking, or if anything happens, Bowie flips around, you won't have the, the test tubes um, all around, so it'll right. stick to the rack. And it's also for the operator. He can just easily take it out, observe whatever's inside. So we're gonna 3D print um, transparent test tubes so it'd be easy to observe. And yeah. Okay. Uh, why didn't you just 3D print an attachment that goes or clips on to an existing <coughs> glass test tube? Uh, we thought mm -hmm. of glass, um, but we thought that it would break easily because it's a uh, robot and you know, it moves a lot. We also, we also like to have the locking mechanism. If we use glass, um, it wouldn't be able to get it. Because Bowie's moving, um, and th there could be shaking, so it could crack or anything. It's also a safety hazard with this. It's not as you got that. Okay. Uh, what has to, uh, did you do any research into if you're putting water quality samples into something that's plastic? Like, does that? Have any um, effect? They, 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 I don't. They, I, I searched that up. They don't like degrade or anything. They don't react with any of the plastic and any plastic material. But does the plastic material react with the water? Well, it's, it's vice versa. It's like okay. So, uh, does this mount to the side of the robot? Um, th you actually had the, the PowerPoint.
So we have our design here. It's basically just a pretty simple but effective cedar. Um, the idea was to keep all the shapes and everything. We'll like, to minimize the <coughs> pain for free printers, so it'll be easy to print um, wherever. It also has these layers on top, which add um, you can add more volume to how much seed you put in. So depending on how much you want to do, you can just add one, or you can add a few more to increase the volume. Um, that's pretty much just the basic. All right. So in terms of how it works, uh, this is obviously a hopper, uh, and then. Uh, the lower mechanism will have a tray here, which will have a slide that will go in and out to control the flow of seed coming out of the hopper, uh, and then stop it all together when you don't want it to be seeding. Uh, it will then turn <coughs> into a spinning disc, which will launch the seed as in every spreader ever designed ever. Um, and then uh, this will all be controlled by an Arduino, which will have a DC motor in the bottom spinning the disc, and a servo on the side which will move the slide in and out to control the seed. Uh, this Arduino will then ultimately interface with Bowie over serial uh, in the final design. Okay, so the budget for Bowie is $63. So there's four different electric components. Um, on top of that, there's seven different 3D prints you have to do, which are on average four hours each, so it's 20 hours of total print time. Um, so far, we've done prototype two, which is more or less this. We have a, a slider which goes on the bottom as well. And it works pretty well. There's a few issues with the slider not fitting perfectly inside the hopper, so the seat gets clogged as it's coming out. Um, but we changed the CAD designs, which we, we had, but the presentation didn't work. So we changed those to accommodate for this, and hopefully the Prototype 3 should work. And then by design, <coughs> we want to have our Prototype fully functioning, and then have it interfaced with the Arduino to control the rate that the seed exits the hopper, and also that it's like spread around on the ground. Do you have any questions? How does it get mounted to the robot? Uh, so the bottom, it's pretty much a box, is its general shape. Uh, the bottom has some uh, mounts to go out and line up with mount holes on the top of the uh, So it'll, the, uh, this, the hopper that's already on there will be removed and this will go on the top, towards the back. Okay, towards the back. And so then it sort of overhangs? Uh it it kind of goes flush with the back. Okay, got it. And then it, it does have a deflector shield to spread the seat backwards. To set it um, yeah. so Did you test how fast the fan has to be, or sorry, the spinner has to be moving in order to like launch the seeds that far? Uh, well, we looked at standard crank spreaders and uh, compared to that, but our actual mechanism for spreading is still two prints away from being complete, so that'll be something we'll have to look at when we get there, hopefully in the next week or so. Yeah. Um, yeah we haven't pretty fast. Tested tested. <laughs> we haven't physically tested it, but we've got to run some like, yeah, very, it does have to go fairly fast. It, it has a, a good sized uh, DC motor on it. So right. we, should, we should be able to accomplish that. Okay, great. And for preventing jams, you think that the uh, door that the servo is connected to will be able to uh, successfully prevent that from happening? We're hoping so. Uh, and we're, we're also hoping that we can get away without having an agitator in the, in the bottom of the hopper, as a lot of uh, spreaders do. Uh, so we'll have to see. Uh, next week or so how that goes. Okay. Um, address it as, as it comes up. Yeah. Uh, great. I can't wait to see it in real life. And uh, yeah, I guess that's also a good point um, <coughs> for other seed spreaders that the disc will probably have to be moving really quickly yes. to spread them very far. Additionally, we have a, um, an Arduino motor controller uh, shield on there, so we can ramp up and down the speed of that motor with this uh, spec. So. Okay. That would be great. Cool.